Hello. This week's Sedra is Sedra's Yisrael. The Torah places expectations on all Jews. These expectations require the 613 mitzvahs and Torah laws, rabbinic laws, various customs that have developed over the centuries since the Torah was given to the Jewish people at Har Sinai. In addition to the legal obligations that make up the body of halacha, there is an entire body of expectations the Torah sets for the people called derech eretz. This body of expectations includes how one behaves towards other people and the development of their character. In this week's Sedra, an easily overlooked insight of Derech Eretz is brought up when Moshe meets his father-in-law, Yisrael. The episode is recounted in this week's Torah reading. Let me read you the Pasuk in English. Yisrael, Moshe's father-in-law, brought Moshe's son and wife to him, sons and wife to him in the, de- in the desert, where he was encamped at the mountain of God. He sent word to Moshe, I, your father-in-law, Yisrael, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. Moshe went out to meet his father-in-law, bowed low and kissed him. Each asked, asked after the other's welfare, and they went into the tent. In his commentary on this week's episode, Rashi wrote, from the wording of this Pasuk, it's hard to know who prostrated himself to whom, who was bowing, Moshe or Yisrael. But when it states in the next words, a man to his fellow, it becomes quite evident for which of the two Moshe or Yisrael is called the man. This was Moshe. How do we know Moshe was called a man? Because we read later in the Torah, and the man, Moshe. We can conclude that it was Moshe who bowed down to his fellow, to his father-in-law Yisrael. This comment of Rashi's is curious. Why does it matter who bowed down to who? In his commentary on Rashi's explanation, Chizkuni wrote that according to Rashi, it's not clear who bowed down before whom. But Rashi said that elsewhere, the Torah referred to Moshe by the name man. So too, in our Pasuk, when it says man, it must be referring to Rashi. Rashi concluded that Moshe was the man who bowed down to Yisrael. This we got. Yet earlier in the Torah, the Chizkuni asks, Moshe agreed to make his home with the man, the Pasuk said, and that man is referring to Yisrael. If both Moshe and Yisrael are referred to as man, how did Rashi know it was Moshe who bowed down to Yisrael? The Chizkuni wrote that later on, Moshe is again referred to as man. As it says, Moshe the man was very modest and humble, more so than any other man. Hashem compliments Moshe by adding the additional words that he was exceedingly humble to show that he, Moshe the king, prostrated himself before his father-in-law and that he was even more modest than Yisrael. It is from the Torah's description of Moshe as humble that we can conclude it would be fitting in with Moshe's character to bow down to Yitro. The episode of Moshe and Yitro greeting each other is so important to us because it demonstrates an example of humility on Moshe's part. As the leader of the Jewish people, the greatest prophet to ever live, and the person who received the Torah at Har Sinai, it would be expected that Moshe wouldn't bow to anyone. In bowing to his father-in-law, Moshe sets the example for all Jews of proper derecharetz and humility. What an important lesson from something that seemingly is not such an important part of the Torah. Shabbat Shalom.